Hi everybody, it's me again and it's been a while. Staff with Steph's Middle School Souffle and I'm an 8th grade teacher in Minneapolis. I was a part of the team doing the 8th grade completion ceremony and we had 309 students so I've been busy this past three weeks but it was a great show and a great turnout so that is good. But today I want to talk about a man in my life who I am just so grateful for. I'm going to talk about my husband, Terry Helmer. Um, but first, I want to say my next series, after I get what done with school, the end of June, I'm serious, we're going to the end of June in Minneapolis, I am going to do a Series 3 Summertime with middle schoolers. I'm going to talk about this is the age where they're too young to have a job. I'm going to continue on with parenting styles. I'm going to talk about mom school. I'm going to do a get off your butts, get outside episode, chores, some type of enrichment, and work on social skills and connections with their own family. So that's the next series coming up. Okay, so let's get to it. It's Father's Day coming up, and there are three very important men in my life that probably have been the most influential one is my grandfather. We call him Papa. His name is James Evenson, and he passed away last October, and he was 90. Um, he taught me how to dance and fish, how to laugh, serve, and enjoy family. Now, I didn't know this man as a father. I knew him as a grandfather, and he was the best. The second man is my father, and my dad, Dale Morseth, taught me honesty, hard work, reliability, and this is the man that told me and my sisters, never be afraid to ask questions. If you want to learn something, then you need to ask. Be fearless. So I appreciate that. But the number man, number one man in my life is Terry Helmer. Uh, he taught me how to be assertive and stick up for myself, and it took a while. Um, taught me to have boundaries. Uh, I grew up to be nice to everybody, and that's not, it's okay, but it has its limitations because sometimes people would walk all over me, and, and he had to teach me, no, you need to be assertive and have boundaries, and I appreciate that as, as my husband. So thank you, Terry. Um, he teaches everybody to be responsible. Um, you do your work. You do your job. You show up to practice. Um, and, of course, he taught me some mechanical skills. <laughs> so... I do know a couple of things about building or painting. A couple of things. So his family might laugh at the fact that <laughs> I am doing family and friends. I'm just so grateful for this man because Terry Helmer, <laughs> he grew up pretty moody. He was an athletic jock, just like his sports pretty much. Um, could be mean at times. Yeah, Terry, you could be mean. Um, but he grew to be an excellent father. So this is also a story about how um, change is good in a way. So especially with being a father. So went from a moody athletic teenager to a great father. Um, I love my husband because he shows up. So if you're a father listening to this, um, yeah, I I really hope that you show up for your kids and your family. My husband is mechanical. He can fix anything. He supports my career as a teacher and decisions. He is a great leader. He does not talk much, um, but he leads by example. He does the job. He makes us feel safe. He is responsible. He's very involved in our children's lives. Very involved. So if your father get involved somehow. Um, He's a great friend to others. He's a pretty serious man. He comes off as unapproachable. But he is hilarious. Uh, so he makes me laugh. He checks in with me as a husband. He asks me how I am, even though I don't want to talk at the end of the day. Um, he gives me space, so I'm grateful for that. He has growth mindset. Now, this is a story. My husband, Terry was that typical Midwestern, manly man, machismo jock. Okay, so when we were in college, he would 
Now, women, don't don't get so upset about this because this is a change story, a growth mindset story. He did he did not support Title IX that much because it stole away from men's athletics. You know that argument. Okay. So, of course, my husband had to change gears a little when he had a daughter. Okay. And now he coaches the fast pitch girls softball team. Um, he goes with my daughter to wrestling competition. He supports women's athletics and he actually sees the value of women and girls in sports. And he has apologized um, for his attitude and behavior and comments. So again, change can happen. And sometimes it takes a different experience to open your eyes more. So this is him at the Lynx game. Um, he helped with our science project too when JC was doing women's sports and, and where they mostly um, come from geographically if they have siblings. So he was a part of that. But this is a really cool moment where he reflected on his attitude and behavior as a young man and came to terms with it. Like, yeah, that was pretty crappy of me. So I love the fact that he was able to do that and grow from that. And you and I as human beings, we also go through that um, where maybe we thought something differently and we we learned through experience and we changed our minds for the better so we give grace to one another for that so nice job terry but i was talking in my last episode about the different types of parenting and i talked about the uninvolved and the permissive and i said don't be those type of parents especially to us teachers and especially to your children my husband is a great example of an authoritative parent authoritative don't get that confused with authoritarian so take a look at that i will do this in the next episode an authoritarian has high expectations very disciplined but unsupportive there is a difference between these two authoritative is what you're aiming for as a parent so an authoritative parent um has clear expectations and they keep it simple some of us are talking way too much to our children and we're discussing way too many bigger topics and what their brains can handle at the time and their moods so terry is available for a planner and homework check daily terry checks grades twice a week terry creates chores for my kids terry follows a schedule with the kids and terry keeps short and simple expectations he doesn't have to talk a lot he shows up he follows the schedule. That works for middle school kids. I would say anywhere from 0 to 16, they need some sort of structure and they need to be able to depend on their parents to follow through with the clear expectations. So I have to laugh at this picture because we played a game and you're supposed to give the card to whomever in a big group and everybody voted Terry is most likely to make someone cry. Yes, another growth story. Terry has had to learn <laughs> to be more kind um, to kids. And again, this is a growth story. Some of his comments he has made in the past hurt people. So he has had to learn the value of tact, especially around children. That's my nephew Carson. So we had a good laugh over this um, because he's he has made changes. So have I. Um, again, Terry taught me how to be more assertive. People were walking all over, over me at, um, in some points in my life, and that's not good either. So he knows there's definite rules in my house. Academics first, chores are second. Praise is rewarded and sincere. Consequences do result when academics chores are not completed. Terry is very consistent, but he's also had to learn to make consequences enforceable. And some of us do this, a lot of us. Even I've probably done this, where I'll be like, that's it! No iPad for a month! <laughs> Can you as the parent follow through with that? Or are you going to be like, well, they did okay today, here's the iPad. No, you have to stick with, with your words and your consequence. So he and I both have had to work through this. Um, so if you also, for number six, Terry and I have had to talk about supporting each other with giving consequences. So there was a time when I gave Silas a timeout and then Terry went and like released him from that. And I said, no, that's my timeout. I own it. I own that punishment that I gave. You need to trust me. 
So we've had to talk about that for a while. If you give the punishment, you follow through with the punishment. So the consequences Terry and I have had to figure out, um, that has to do with individual children. So Silas, he loves friends. Okay, so we say no friends for two days or no iPad time for two days. Um, something enforceable. Um, JC, no TV. If I take friends away from JC, sometimes she's fine with that. She'll just go in her room and nap. And that doesn't, that doesn't get it. But she loves her Disney channel, so no TV. Um, Terry and I have had to talk about this together as parents too, like, okay, what's going to work? What's not going to work? Um, we've had to give each other corrections on punishments. He's had to do that to me too. Another thing. So, so far we went over clear expectations, definite rules, and supportive. Um, my husband does a really nice job of having high expectations for sports, chores, and academics, but he knows, Terry knows personally about rejection and loss. So here's my son. He had a really bad wrestling tournament. Terry, I, I listened to him talk to him, you know, and said, you know, you're going to have days like this. You're going to have games like this. You're going to have tournaments like this. Um, so he was comforting to my to to our son and it was really nice to hear he doesn't get all bent out that his son lost a game and doesn't yell or scream my husband does not really yell or scream at our kids um once in a while he will but as far as athletics go he knows that the world doesn't revolve just around sports there's more to it than that and i really respect my husband in supporting academics also he coaches his children. He checks in with their planner and homework daily. I said that. Again, schedules are important. He attends all parent-teacher conferences. As a teacher, he supports my career. He knows that I'm busy all day long at my school, and it's really hard for me to leave work. So he's the one that takes the phone calls. He takes time to go on family trips. Uh, he likes to take the boys on a boys' trip and a girls' trip um, to the Boundary Waters, getting that one-on-one -on -one time with the kids. I personally love that. And my kids do, too. They really appreciate that he takes the time and energy to invest in our children. And he knows them well individually. So, again, we went through this last time, but terry one time said like last month i don't act like this I, re I don't remember acting like this he's he's being such a jerk i don't pff, i was never like this yeah you were terry so i had to remind him um so he's had to learn to trust me in this area of uh, middle school development and listen to me um especially he's um coaching now 12 u girls softball team so he's come to me with questions and and I've read pieces of this book to him, too. So that makes him better. And he wants to learn. And I, I respect that about him also. Um, this age is about to arrive for us. And I'm just telling you, authoritative parenting is the best option. Please take the time to be supportive. Have clear expectations and definite rules. So... In some, as middle school parents, it takes a village. Two parents work best. If you're an only or single parent, please, please wrap around and seek others to help you. This is more of a business than a romance at this age. We have, Terry and I have had to grow in this, this area. We recognize that this stage is very intense yet short. We have to be in unison with our planning, our consequences, our expectation. We are a team, so you and your partner or your village should be on a team. Um, we have to take breaks and just breathe when dealing with this. Moody, 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 Judy, two teenagers, oof da. So, Terry, thanks for being a great dad and a husband. Keep up the fantastic work you were meant to to be a family man. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. If there are fathers out there, this man is a great role model. Um, and I know people probably are laughing at this, his friends and family thinking, oh, Terry is a role model. Yeah, he is. And he's had to grow into it. And we are still growing. 
So if you like this, please subscribe or share. Thank you.